inverse functions simply map the outputs back onto the inputs. Okay, and so what that means is you take a given function. So again, if you had a function like um, this, in order to find the inverse of this, okay, you simply replace, again, the function, the f function represents the y or output value but you replace the x's and the y's. So we take what was our function, turn it into an x, what was our x, turn it into a y, and then you simply solve for y. And so if you uh, subtract a three from both sides as your first step, and then you multiply by two to get your y completely alone, you get your function 2x minus 6 is equal to y. And so that represents your inverse. And when you identify the inverse, you're going to use f to the minus 1 of x. And anytime that minus 1, that power, is written um, above that function, okay, before you write your variable, uh, it refers to the inverse. So the inverse of this given function is 2x minus 6. Okay. Now again, um, if you're doing this with your calculator, you, s you do simply need to uh, plug your equation in um, and just switch the x's and y's. So what you could do here is you could solve. If you were to write your whole original equation, y equals 1 half x plus 3, just replace Again, you'd have to manually replace the x and the y. So 1 half times y plus 3. And then solve, in this case, for y. It'll give you your answer to confirm 2x minus 6 is that inverse. Okay, so, but you do have to do that step manually. If you had a function of 2x minus 6, the way that you would find the inverse is you'd simply replace the x and the y. So here this becomes an x and this becomes a y. And then solve for y. So I'd add 6 to both sides. And then divide by 2. So I get 1 half x plus 3 is equal to y. So that is my inverse function is 1 half x plus 3. And, and again, that confirms those, I mean, if, if something is the inverse, if, if, if an equation is the inverse of another equation, it works the other way around. They, they have that reciprocal relationship. Now, the one, the one thing that's always going to work with these, if you ever needed to test it, is if you take an, an, a composition of functions between a function and its inverse, it's always going to equal x. doesn't matter which one is which. Always going to equal x. We go to our y editor here. I'm just going to type in these two equations. So 2x minus 6, and we found the um, inverse function to be 1 half x plus 3. Okay, if we look at these uh, two functions, they're going to be reflected on the line y equals x. So I'm creating this third equation here. And, and so if I look at this or show you this graph, So here's my first equation. Here's my second equation. And, and this next one is going to be the line for which they're reflected on. So the line y equals x always provides the line that the inverses of each other are reflected across that line. So if you were to fold this graph one here along the line y equals x, it's going to map right onto the inverse and I ask you to reflect it on that line. It looks like this. So if you reflected this here, uh, what's going to happen is it's going to look kind of like that, right? Is this inverse a function? Does it pass the function test, if you guys recall that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. no. The function test means that for any given input, there's only one output. Yeah. So it doesn't pass that vertical line test, right? So Technically, when you're, whenever you're dealing with a function that um, has two points that will cross the same horizontal line, uh, 
you have to restrict the domain on it in order to have an inverse. So if this, let's say this was just the function y equals x squared, in order for you to find an inverse of that, you can't use all parts of that graph. You have to limit it to just the first half or the last half. So if we eliminated this piece, which when we flipped it over would eliminate this piece, and now does that part form a function, the inverse? This red part now? Now it passes that function test, right? And so technically, if you needed to find the inverse of y equals x squared, the answer is still, or in this case, the f minus 1 of x is going to be the square root of x. But it's limited in this case because, uh, again, you can see it doesn't apply to any of the negative numbers. And that should make sense in this domain here. So as you get to like domain and range of inverse functions, it's not always going to map out. You have to make sure that the inverses remain functions. Like I said, we're not going to talk about this at all. You're not going to be tested on that at all. I just wanted you to at least have seen it.